but we're in 1 Corinthians 11, as uh, is uh, normal for us. Uh, most, every, most everything that we, we believe, we get from Paul. Paul's writings, the, the epistles to the churches that Paul, that God gave to Paul and that Paul wrote. It's not that we don't get everything from the Bible, but the gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, also have the account of the, of the Lord's table of, of the Last Supper. Now, John does not, although they're, in, in the gospel of John, they're all around it. The scene in the upper room takes up several chapters. Jesus washing the disciples' feet in chapter 13. And John is all around it, but John, it does not mention the, this in the Gospel of John. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it. In remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity one more time, Lord, to take the bread and the cup, and Lord, to be reminded one more time of what you did for us at Calvary. Lord, I... I think of that song, Love So Amazing. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? Lord, when we stop and think about that, amazing love. We thank you for our table again today. And Lord, one more time as we do this, we are showing what you did for us, and we are reminded of it. One more time, Lord, that song someone wrote, I love to tell the story, it did so much for me and that is why I tell it even now to thee. What a story. What an account. Father, we thank you for that today. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit of God that impresses upon our heart and draws us to you. Bless in the few moments now, Jesus, we pray. In thy holy and precious and wonderful and matchless name, amen. And amen. Again, we are reminded of this table that we're about to observe together. Of what Jesus did for us. I don't know if you ever stop to think about that. The Bible makes it clear here that the reason that we do this is to be reminded of what Jesus did for us on the cross 2,000 years ago. To think that God, according to Paul in Philippians, said that being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made like unto sinful men. And we stop and think about what God would do that, to think that God, God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the King of the universe, the King forever, King eternal, the Prince of the kings of the earth, to think that he would leave heaven and come down here for us, who are so unworthy. When you, when you stop and ponder and think about that, what love is this? No greater love hath any man this than a man lay down his life for his friends. But Jesus said in Romans chapter 5, Paul writes, But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, we weren't his friends, we weren't his relatives, we were sinners. And yet Christ did that for us. 
We're not, we, we really, when you, you think about us, we're not very inclined to help somebody that doesn't like us. If you know somebody that doesn't like you and they say to you, hey, would you come over? No, I don't believe I'm going to do that. Would you help me? No, I'm not going to help you move. Would you help me? No, I'm not going to help you. Because I don't like you. You don't like me. But that's what Jesus did. And that while we were yet sinners. I'd never done anything for God. Had never done a thing for God. And we're sinners. And by nature, the children of wrath. Without hope. Strangers from the household of faith. And yet Christ did that for us. I read this the other day. I, I don't know who wrote it. If I did, I would give them, give them credit for it. But this, that I cannot, someone said, I cannot understand how a God of love would send someone to hell. What I can't understand is how someone would not accept the God of love and all that he has done for us. Now, God doesn't send people to hell, but, but the, to think that people would reject him, and yet God in his mercy still loves them, still loves us. How many times did you reject him before you were saved? Yet in his mercy and grace, 2,000 years ago, he died on that Oregon cross for us. Despised and rejected and spit upon. When those wicked, ungodly men at the foot of the cross said, he saved others, let's see if he will save himself. If they had known what they were saying, he could have saved himself. He could have come down off the cross. He could have, but he didn't. Why is that, preacher? Because he loved us. Love, so amazing, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again now for this table. And as we contemplate, Lord, and think about what you did for us, think about, Lord, as we think about that, we thank you today. Lord, I want to thank you today. Lord, I remember. I, can't e I cannot even in my mind's eye imagine what it was like that day at Calvary. Total darkness. The blood flowing. The weeping and the wailing. The jeering and the jesting. The mocking. I can't really even fathom that. And yet you did not come down off that cross. And Lord, I know that in eternity we'll be so eternally grateful for that. And we thank you for that. Help us now as we contemplate and think about this, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen.